Friday. Happy Friday, everybody. Happy Friday. It is time for wind down on a Friday afternoon. Yes. Happy Friday. And you know what? Happy Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Oh. <laughs> I've never heard that one. Oh, have you not? Every May 4th is Star Wars Day. It's May the 4th be with you. And is that something you made up or is that something? <laughs> I wish I did. Like, that's so clever. May the 4th. And then it's also almost Cinco de Mayo. So happy yes. it's tomorrow. Mayo. And the Kentucky Derby is going on, isn't it? Absolutely. And I don't know if you heard, I posted this today because I just think this is so great that Amazon at the Kentucky Derby is backing a horse called Audible. Love it. Yeah. And at first I thought, well, that's crazy. Do you like invest in a horse and, you know, name it after your brand? That's a pretty long term investment. But it turns out that while somebody at Amazon was doing their regular SEO search, like right. for their brands, the horse popped up in the search. So that's how they knew the horse existed. And so they're back in the horse. And of course, you know, we talk a lot about hitching a ride. And I, I would guess that that is just about the best example of hitching a ride that there is. That is. And I think it's interesting that if you had a horse named Audible, would you not have tried to hitch a ride on Amazon? Would, would you not have already told Amazon? I would have right. been like, totally playing on that one. Yeah. You and I, you and I would have been all <laughs> over it. Yeah. All over it. All over that. So hello, everyone tuning in. I can see. I What's weird is every time I'm in here, it looks different in the back end of BeLive. Um, today, I can see people in here, which usually yeah, I can't. This is, we're hosting, and I can't see anything. Which is maybe why I couldn't see you earlier. I don't know what was up, but it was funny. I was knocking on this. I was knocking on that, going, "I'm here, I'm here, I'm here." Like Horton hears a who, um, but well, you're... no, I could see you, but I couldn't hear you. No, even before that, before oh. you were going, I don't know where she is, and then I saw you calling. I'm like, I'm right here. Yeah. Well, so, we're, gonna to, we're gonna have to figure that out. I know that was anyway, weird. Anyway, I I see no guests. I see no comments. I see no nothing. So if you are here, hey, Bob, let me see. I'm going to put on my glasses. I didn't think I would need my glasses today, um, but I'll be the eyeballs. You'll, um, you'll need to be the eyeballs because uh, I can't see anybody. And Bob says, may the fourth be with you. He loves that. And good afternoon, Ellen. And um, yeah, it's Friday, and we're all ready to wind down. And oh. it's like this is such a big week with everything going on with the Kentucky Derby, the Kentucky Derby, the um, Cinco de Mayo, and then it's Small Business Week. It is. It is the end of Small Business Week. And there was, I don't know if um, anybody who's watching there was involved in anything. There are small business events all over, uh, at least North America. I'm not sure if this happens in, in Europe as well, but, uh, but certainly all over North America, lots of events for Small Business Week. I know here in Canada, the BDC, the, uh, um, Canadian Development Bank does a, does a whole bunch of events. And so we thought, Gina and I thought that this would be a great week to celebrate, um, you know, that small is beautiful. Small and, is beautiful and small is innovative. And shout out to Jacqueline who is here. Um, and so here's the other interesting thing, Gina, yeah. is that um, even though I'm hosting, it won't let me. You know what I think may have happened, although nobody else watching probably can. I think I may have been logged in on the guest link. You can't. Do. Oh, that you're also in as a guest. I think so because it my I can't show my agenda. I can't do anything. <laughs> so, Which would I, be. You know what? That would explain why you couldn't see me because yes. if we're both in as a guest, only whoever is a host. So for those of you wondering, what the heck are they talking about? We're using a tool called Be Live that broadcasts into Facebook for Facebook Lives. And it has all these cool tools. But I bet you that's what it is. If we're both in as a guest, yes. we are both, um, our hands are tied as far as bringing up the guest comments and questions. But that's okay. And I couldn't figure out why you couldn't see me the whole time. So well, I think that must be it. Yeah. But um, 
And I also, I also thought it looked a little different. Anyway, um, nobody watching really cares about this, but it is kind of a live lesson about using Be Live. And if you drink um, wine, I'm it's all better. It was clicked on the wrong link to get me in, and and that that's what happened. But Gina, you had a really innovative small business that you wanted to talk about. I went and checked them out, and I just think they're so oh, cool. So cool! It's such a cool, but to. I, I love sweets, first of all, but even this sent me over the edge, and I, my teeth hurt when I was um, reading about it. So it's here in Colorado, and it's a company called The Cereal Box. Cereal Box. There's another place that I love here in Denver. There's a lot of small business, well, a lot of small business, cool, innovative companies, but these two are both in the food industry, and one of them is called The D-Bar, and it's all desserts, and that's that's cool, but it's not super innovative. But the cereal box is super innovative because they take people kind of down a nostalgic trip. They have over a hundred types of cereal. And when you walk in, it is like going to a Baskin Robbins. So you see the hundred um, types of cereal. So there's Captain Crunch without berries. There's Captain Crunch with only berries. There's uh, Fruit Loops, Cocoa Pie. There's all these. And then they have a menu where they've created formulas. So you could say, I want the, you know, peanut butter surprise. And they mix all different types of peanut butter, or it could be a peanut butter chocolate surprise. So they have a recipe, and then it, it's blending different types of cereals. And then they put Pop-Tarts and ice cream and whipped cream and whatever to make this recipe. Yeah. So I said the movie Elf came to mind of when he made the Pop-Tarts and licorice and all of that. So somebody that watched Elf then decided, hey, we should open our own business called the cereal box and it is actually like lined out the door so people love this business idea it's very well, and and i i think that that's one of the things that is cool about small business and i think i think we forget sometimes I, well i can't speak for anybody else i know that i forget um as the business grows and I find myself <laughs> trying to behave too much like a big business. Right. When in fact, there are a lot of positives to having that small business feel. And there was an article that came out in Inc. at the beginning of this week. And each day they highlighted a different uh, business to show the different competitive advantages that different businesses, that small businesses have. And what you just described is one of those competitive advantages, the ability to be really focused and really unique and really quirky that when you get into a big business and you get into economies of scale, you, you simply you simply can't do right yeah and I think again sometimes we try to be bigger and I even had an example this week where I was trying to be big and I, I laughed because when I started my business in 1995 I bought a, a cassette tape that had office sounds that you would play during the day so it sounded like you were a busy office with phones ringing and people you did not where I did and Kirk and I were working together and we would try to pretend that we were bigger and you didn't want people to know you worked from home and um, it's, it was hysterical. Well, now this week, I think I shared with you, Tony, that, you know, I was on a conference call. My dog started barking. Our cleaning people came in. My dog bit one of the ladies. There was a lady screaming. I'm like, um, excuse me. I'll be right back. <laughs> and I was like, okay, thank goodness today. Most of us who work from home, um, and I would love, yeah, it was hysterical, Jacqueline. It was, it was frightening and hysterical altogether because I, I don't pretend anymore. I, you know, we have a big team and we all work virtually, and that's just a smart way to do business. But sometimes you're right, Tony. We try to be bigger and we forget, wow, when we're small and scrappy, you can come up with so many great ideas. Maybe it's out of necessity, though. You know, what is out of necessity that we, we, it's scrappy, like, out of necessity, oh, yeah. come up with creative ideas. I think once you settle into our business about uh, the Insider Report lately, which we're very proud of, and it's got you know a brand new format and new frequency and all of this beautiful new stuff, and it's great. And the content's new and the content's great. And I looked at it and I went, "No, it's not there yet. It's not there yet." And that and that's because we we I can't speak for anybody else. I fell into a trap that I tell everybody else to avoid, which is you know, starting to do things the way everybody else is doing them. And in the in the process, 
the the insider's report doesn't really meet the five S's anymore, or it doesn't need it as much as I would like. And so we, of course, of all people who who promote all the time that you have to keep innovating and and that better isn't good enough, and you have to keep moving ahead and daring to be different. Woke up one morning and I looked at the stuff that we were producing, or at least the insider report itself, and went, "No, that's got to go." It's hard when you really are focused on being different. It's really hard to come up with things that either haven't been done or that you feel are different enough to stand out. And I know a couple of weeks ago we had a whole topic on newsletters. We got on the topic of newsletters, which was great, um, and really focusing on being different in that area. I, I think I've seen a couple, another really cool small business this week that just, it's a fairly new startup here in Denver called Havenly, and it's an online interior design company so you go on and you work with a designer online at a low budget because it was design it was actually created by this woman who said she moved from new york to denver suddenly she had you know four times the amount of space in her place in denver and she goes and i had nothing to decorate it and i didn't i couldn't afford to hire an interior decorator and so she came up with this concept and it's a really cool company and i only know about it and kind of tooting the horn for them because the Shreklet, my youngest, um, I think she'll be their next fabulous employee. She's actually on her third interview. Um, wow. out there. And the stuff that they've done in the interview process and in their new hire process that we found is really innovative. But the whole concept of the company, I thought, was born out of necessity. Whether it's your newsletter, whether it's your biz new business idea, if you if you approach it as, okay, I'm really starting new, what's what's out there that's missing? You know, what's right. missing in what I'm trying to do? And in right. newsletters, maybe we need to ask ourselves, not what can I do different, but maybe what's missing in the whole concept of emails that go out? What's missing that people might be hungry? For? I mean, no one's hungry for more email, but yeah. what's missing in what they're getting? You've got such great content that I know now your goal is you're going to put content in there that we don't get to see unless we're on that list. Yes, we're going to put content in there, but, and just because there's a few of you on the call or watching, there's going to be a whole bunch of surprises. Yeah, so uh, I think that's even, the even ones you don't know about yet, Gina. Oh, see, I love it because to me, there's some intrigue, there's the anticipation, which is all part of great marketing, uh, making it really exclusive. And well, making it exclusive is one thing, but the other thing is it's got to meet the five S's. Well, if, if, a, a digital digest comes out at the same time on the same day every week with the same format and the same type of content, no matter how good that content is, right. same. that's all too predictable for me. Yeah, predictability so, could kill. Well, pulling the plug on that. I love it. Well, um, Jack Wood says, OMG, I'm on video calls all day long and my mute button is my best friend. Oh, from my thing, I you know what? I was hitting mute. That was very necessary. Um, put my hand over my mouth and yell at the dogs. I've done that. Um, I even try to do like a ventriloquist where I hit mute and go, quiet, so they can't see me yelling. Um, <laughs> and then, no, those are, sorry, go ahead. Jim Dunn says, it's a great conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Um, cheers to you. And then Jacqueline says, I love surprises. Yeah, it's like in our emails, are we putting surprises you know, we've kind of talked about is there is your content in your even your everyday emails that go on or your sales emails or client emails and what's different and surprising. So I yeah. think I think small businesses can do it better because we don't have to go through. I mean, I, I we work with some large companies where you have to have everything go through so many, you know, groups that have to check off on it. And they're like, no, we can't say this. and No, we can't do that. So I think as a small business push the envelope a little more and yeah and I, I think there's a there's a, a saying that we've had for a long time which is turn the disadvantage into an advantage and I, I think I think that at times we begin to convince ourselves that being small is a disadvantage when in fact it's a huge advantage I remember years ago we had a uh, an event production an event marketing company and we were pitching for business from this huge shoe retailer that was opening a big new flagship store and we were going to handle all the, the event marketing for it. 
And I'll never forget, I was in Vancouver and I think I was at a CAPS convention actually. And I got a message from the office that I needed to call the client and, or the prospective client. And I called the client and uh, she said, well, it's down to you and X. And X was this huge PR company in Toronto, like huge offices all over the world kind of thing. And she said, and so we'd like to stop by next week and see your operation. <laughs> You're seeing it. <laughs> and I remember thinking, we don't have an operation. Like we don't, at that point, we were working out of our home. You know, it was the basement, the dining room. But here's what we did. The, the, the shoe company was Bata Shoes. And uh, Canadians will know there's a Bata Shoe Museum. And so what we did is we reached out to the shoe museum and we started to think. And the question we asked ourselves was, what are we going to be able to do in this moment that that big PR company is not going to be able to do because we're small? Mm -hmm. So we transformed our entire um, a dining room into a version of their own Bata Shoe Museum. And everybody who was involved in converting that room was eventually going to get business out of this contract if we got the contract. So right. everybody put, there was lighting and there was like, it was absolutely amazing. And when the client walked in, she was blown away. And we had the business within the first five minutes. And I've never forgotten that we did something that the big guys either couldn't do or, or wouldn't do yeah. or whatever wouldn't even think and so it's constantly trying to stay ahead of the competition and think what wouldn't they do what don't they have the courage to do and how can we how can we shake things up i remember also when we had our event business one year one of our big competitors took the client we were pitching to hear somebody sing somebody who was going to be in the event if this other uh, supplier won the contract. And I remember sitting there and going, well, that's not fair. You can't do that. It's a pitch. You got to go to the office and pitch. And then, you know, before long, you have to go, well, that was brilliant. Right. Right. So the next year, we incorporated a singer into our pitch. But instead of taking <laughs> them, we brought the singer to the pitch, had her dressed as a member of our team, and right in the middle of the presentation, she got up on the uh, boardroom table and broke into song. But, but, and we won. But we never would have had that idea if our competitor, the big guy, hadn't done something the year before that we thought, well, no, 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 you don't, you don't do that. And then you think, okay, but you do do that. And because we're small, what advantage do we have? We yeah. got lots of advantages. Yeah. And, and okay, inquiring minds want to know who won the Bata shoe proposal? We Woo! did. Yeah. Within five minutes of her walking in the, uh, in the room, she was so blown away. And when I asked her why we won, which we always do, and that's a lesson out there. I don't know if, if when you win an engagement or any kind of business, you ask the client why. 99% of the time we don't. But it's a really good question to ask. Uh, because then you get it from their point of view. You may assume that you know why you won. Anyway, I asked her why we won, and she said, because if you did all of this, you will do everything in your power to make sure that our event succeeds. I love so it. That, yeah. that's, what, yeah, that's what you need to do. Well, I think it's interesting because even those two stories illustrate the fact that not just big companies, but big companies are probably more prone to this. We get busy doing business. Yes. And I think even as a small business, we get busy doing business. And so we don't make the time to think differently and to really push those envelopes and say, what are, this morning we had a meeting and we were talking about what's something that's, what's different that we're not already doing. And, yeah. you know, when it comes to marketing, what, what is everybody else doing? What are we not doing that we could try? And, yeah. you know, marketing is all about experimenting. So you have to experiment, you have to test and see if it works. So you don't, you can't, you can't go out and have enough data. You have to, and you look at it, go small businesses, very few of them will collect data before yeah. they try something crazy. They go yeah. out and do it and then see if it works. Yeah. Uh, and I think big companies stay too busy doing business and they don't, they don't um, do things different. So, um, and Jacqueline yeah. says, that's so, that's so amazing that you won. Yeah. Yeah. They will refer you guaranteed. That's true. It's like there's another, yeah, they'll, they'll spread the word about you want to hear what somebody did, um, you know, for us to get the business. 
And, yeah. and, and I think we, we talk a lot about this. I'm, and this is just a thought that's coming to me. We talk a lot about what we accomplish when we get the business. I think that's pretty second nature for us, all of our testimonials and our case studies. And we did this and we did that. What we don't talk enough about, and perhaps where we're not applying our uh, creative and innovative neurons a lot as small businesses, is how we win the business. Mm. And, and, and how you pitch or whatever it is that you do in your particular business, how you do that is is actually the one of the first touch points in the sales process where you have an opportunity to stand out and do things differently. We had a pitch recently just after the holidays for a large company in, in the UK. Well, it didn't matter that they were large, a company in the UK. Um, and, you know, we had a phone call with them and then they said, when can you send us something? And I jumped right in and I said, well, we can send you something by this date. And once I got off the call, I realized I don't want to send something because that's what they're going to ask everybody to do. Right. Uh, so we sent an email and said, uh, we would rather not send something. Can we get on a Zoom uh, call? And we did a whole presentation with a bunch of fun stuff on the Zoom call, did more work than I think anybody else in understanding their business before we even got the business. So I think I think those moments as small businesses are moments where we can really differentiate ourselves if we put our thinking caps on in how we about how we get the business and not just what we do once we have the business. Right, right. And I think, you know, just shouting out to all small businesses out there, it's it is tough. It's it's hard. Yeah. If you work alone, it's hard. We had that talk today about, you know, sometimes you're just I need someone to celebrate with me. I need yeah. someone who understands, um, you know, and and what what we're going through or when you don't win the business and like taking the time to okay mourn that loss but then also take the time to learn and say what would I do different next time and really yeah. put those into pl to practice and I think for small businesses you know we're we're scrappier we're resourceful we will do what big businesses often won't do because what we will do is everything what yeah. individuals within a, a big company will do is their particular piece and yeah, I love that. I love Scrappy. I think that's going on my wall. Scrappy. Small yes. business. Scrappy. I, I, mean, what, I mean, do you remember back when you first started your business? Like, what are some of the Scrappy things that you did? Well, some of the ones we just talked about were definitely yeah. Scrappy back then. I mean, I don't, I would like to think that I'm no less Scrappier now than I was then. Um, I, I, in fact, my scrappiness sometimes, and you would attest to this, my scrappiness sometimes becomes an obstacle because I'm so <laughs> determined to do something different that, that I, it keeps me from moving forward. Um, but yeah, I think, I think a lot of us are scrappy, but I think we get tired. And I think, I think your point, uh, Gina, whether you work alone, even sometimes if you work with people, a small team, that can be exhausting. Right. Uh, certainly if you're at the top, there was a really interesting, Seth Godin sent out in his morning little digest, which is like five lines long every morning, right. um, was talking about the leadership structure or the, the team structure in your organization, but in a small business. And it was really interesting as he said, is it a pyramid? Is it a circle? Is it a hub with a spoke? or several spokes, and I went, ooh, for a lot of us in small business, it's a hub with spokes. And right. in that hub is you, Gina, is me, is Ellen, is Bob, is everybody. Everybody probably on this call is a hub. And that in itself can be exhausting. Yeah, and it is. We've, we've had this conversation. Sometimes you just go, I, I'm so tired of doing okay. everything. And then the next day you're like, okay, it's awesome. I just yeah. rocked that call. <laughs> you know, and you have, you celebrate. I mean, yeah, some of the, I mean, I even think the scrappy things that I did was back in the day when there was Kinko's. Do you remember Kinko's? Uh, do, do you and I have Kinko's at the FedEx stores now? But, you know, when you were down there at midnight making copies of brochures. Oh, yeah, I remember all that stuff. Yeah, we were at Kinko's, but we were at the Canadian equivalent. Right. Oh, so it was all night. Yeah. All nighters yeah. get a presentation ready. I did an all nighter for this one, the Manchester, the UK one. I hadn't done an all nighter in about five years. I almost died. <laughs> like, I almost died. It took me a week to recover. Like, I am way too old to do that on all yeah. night stuff <laughs> anymore. But yeah, if that's what you meant by scrap, oh yeah. I mean, we've all done it. We've right. all done it and 
maybe you're right. We don't do it anymore. I'm curious, yeah. those of you listening, like what are some of the scrappy things that you've done in your business as a small business um, that you've done to either, I mean, it could be win business. It could be just doing business. You know, it doesn't even have to be um, winning the business or a bid situation, but it's, it's one of those things that, man, we do scrappy things. And I think those things are to be celebrated. You know, it's that, that's what makes us. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, while, and while people are typing that, just cause I don't want to run out of time. Cause this article in Inc, there were five competitive advantages that they said that we small businesses have. And I just want, it was a beautiful agenda that I all had typed in that now I can't use. Um, but here, <laughs> But here they are. And, 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 and if you think about it, anybody who's listening to this, whether live or on the repeat, if you think about it, these really are the competitive advantages we have. One is that we can become part of a community. A lot of local businesses, right? You become part of the community. You know people in the community. Big businesses don't do that. You may right. even become some kind of a local institution in your community and, and people know that you're there and rely on you. One of the other ones was personality and the ability to be quirky. And if you think about your cereal box story is quirky. Yeah. That's yeah. what it is. And it doesn't mean that you have to step outside and be like weird if you're not that way, which <laughs> some are quite naturally. But um, it is the ability to to express your personality. You know, people always talk about don't make the business about you because then you can't sell it. Well, in this week, I read so many small businesses that were all about the person that they have just sold and moved on. So use your personality. Um, and one of the other things they talk about is uh, obviously customer service and doing things. There is this one uh, ladies lingerie shop that actually always had a seamstress on site uh, to adjust the bra if it didn't fit. I didn't even know you could adjust bras. But anyway, to adjust the bra, there was a bicycle store that had a track up on the upper level of his, of his store that simulated driving and uh, biking in the rain. So these are, these are all customer service things. So just think about those things. These are, we do have an advantage and, and being small is not a disadvantage. Did you get any scrappy comments, Gina? Let's see, scrap, let's see if I can see any of them. Um, I don't see any yet. No, no, scrappy. Scrappy, people, scrappy people aren't are fussing up um, no, no, no. on their scrappiness. But I mean, you said it, though, I think I think out of necessity, again, not not any diss to a big business. Obviously, big businesses are saying we have to do this, we have to make this happen. But I think in small businesses, we have the mindset of this is my baby, this is my business. I need to make this work, and you're willing yeah. to do whatever it takes. And you, you know, we had the conversation this week of um, when I, when uh, Bailey had to have these interviews and I said, you know, make sure you take the time to do handwritten notes. And she was asking me like, when, when did you learn all these things? I said, I think when you have a business, you're just, you're always thinking of what's something that sets you apart from whoever you're competing with and whether yeah. that's in small things, big things, it's, it's being willing to think outside that box and do the, the things that other people just won't do. Yeah. Um, and, and then I think just like we talked about last week is making sure as a small business that you work in time to take care of yourself because scrappiness can wear you down. Scrappiness um, can wear you down. Scrappiness can definitely wear you down. And I think I love what you're saying because, you know, we talk about small business, but I, I think really what we're talking about is as much entrepreneurial spirit as it is small business. Because if you think about it, in big businesses, uh, if you have a department in that business where the leader is has an entrepreneurial mindset, that department within that big company tends to operate quite differently than than the other ones in the organization. So, you know, it's 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 as you say, we get tired, we get exhausted, we're not as scrappy as we used to, not that I want to get as scrappy as I used to and staying up all night. But um I, I think sometimes we need to remind ourselves to get back in touch with that. And speaking of getting back in touch, uh we do want to let our faithful wine downers know that there will be no show next week. Um, I am actually taking off and I am taking eight days in seclusion to go to a mixed media art retreat. Gina, I will miss you terribly. And uh, so we will be back in a couple of weeks. And I definitely know that right now I, small business Tony, is in need of a break. The next I island. Celebrating my daughter's graduation. So and a baby, maybe. 
Uh, ba- well, we're hoping that we, I have one daughter that's pregnant due in a week and one daughter that won a huge award at the business school up at CU and she's being honored on Thursday and then Friday is her graduation. And we said, okay, you have, you can't have the baby during Thursday or Friday time period. Like that would be terrible. Um, so we're telling her to sit with her legs crossed. And, sit with uh, the legs crossed. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you for um, for being with us. I'm just wondering if, because both of us are here as guests, <laughs> who's going to hang it, up? It will <laughs> have taped. It will have taped, and uh, will the recording well, actually appear? Because well, I don't well, can because The recording doesn't happen in Be Live. The recording happens on Facebook, and it is broadcasting on Facebook, so we know that worked. And okay. says he loves this. He's got to think outside the box. And you're right. We all need to stay outside there. And when we find ourselves getting busy and getting back in our comfy box, get back outside and think differently. Yeah. And salute and cheers to all the small business owners out there. Um, may the cheers. Think audience. differently and ask yourself what's missing. That was a great point. Cheers. Have a great couple of weeks, everybody. And uh, we'll be back. We'll be back. Bye. Bye. I have no idea. Ha, ha, ha.